Hey guys, what's up? It is 12 11 of 2016. And you guys are getting another update video. So be happy about that. I finished both the ponchos. All the ends are woven in. Everything is good. I also woven all the ends on the charity hats I've been working on in the um pot holders that I had that I did with that. Those couple of odds and end balls of um cotton that I had from the swap we did earlier this year at Cara's house. So they're all put together now. All my little pot holders. I even put little hanging hooks on them this time. Hangers on them, so there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like two, three small, four small ones, and these three big ones. I have some more of this blue yarn, so when I get on another pot holder kick, I mean, I absolutely love these things in my kitchen. I love them to death, and um, so yeah, so that's done, and so the ponchos are finished, so. Here is the multicolor black one the lady wanted that's like mine, other than I made a modification to the neck that I showed you guys. So that one's done and it came out very well. And then the one using the greens multi is I finished that one yesterday. And so but uh yeah. It came out very well. Um, the modification I made, I really love it. And uh, it looks really good on these poncho ponchos. So both of those are done. So I want you guys to see them because they'll be going away this week to the press. They're going to be belonging to. Um, what am I working on since I finished those? Oh, I don't even know. Did I show you guys I finished my water bottle cozy? I think I took a picture of it for Instagram, but I don't know if I showed you guys. I love these. Um, it doesn't just serve as a water bottle cozy for me. I actually will slide my phone down inside of here and some um, pens that I like writing with for work. They're like my personal pens. Um, and then it sits on my desk. I just pick it up and go. And when I go for a walk or something, it's like right there. And it sits flat. The bottom, I always do the bottom with the crochet, um, just a little crochet circle. And then I pick up the stitches and I knit the rest of it up. Uh, this is like thicker with the crochet. And it seems to um, hold up better than when I just do a knit, like a, a knit version. I mean, you can use this cozy too for like a wine bottle or something. It's just a simple knit stitch. It's, it's not hard to do. Uh, baby bottle too. <laughs> So, but yeah, because my old one, my old one um, has been Frankenstein together a couple of times. So it's, it's time for it to go away. And uh, we move on to the new and improved water bottle cozy. I mean, I don't know, my son might want it for something. Who knows? But it's still functional. It's just that I was starting to have them to seam together the bottom. Now, if this was one I did that was all knit, the, the bottom portion, and, and so I, you know, the crochet one seemed to do better than the, when I do the do one that's all knit. So yeah, um, what am I working on now? I cast on the. Simple Cable Scarf by Jammies Modern Crochet Designs, but it's actually a knit scarf. <laughs> so that's the, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. So that's it. And I cast it on using some Hobby Lobby um, yarn. I'm, I've only done like, I'm on like the, um, let me see, 17, 17, 18, 19. I'm on the 22nd row, and uh, this cable repeat is a, it's a long cable repeat. So it's going to be like one of those long, long cables. I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. So yeah, I mark, I put stitch, stitch markers in so I would know 
And then this means this is the right side of my work. Um, this one down here. So, yeah, I love these these big stitch markers. I love them. The other thing that I'm still working on is my son's Christmas fingerless gloves. Yeah. I did a couple of rows on them yesterday, not too many. I need to just go ahead and do it because I can knock these out in a day. And then I'll be done with them. He can get his gloves for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So this is the Hobby Lobby yarn as well. This is Hobby Lobby Christmas yarn. And the color name is 738. Um yeah. But I need, I could go ahead and hurry up and do these. But this is a worst of weight yarn. And it knits up very quickly. So I might I might put down what I'm crocheting right now. Just go ahead and knock out his mittens and then move on back to this because I want to get this one done before Christmas. And then I got another project that I gotta start working on. It's a baby blanket. Um it's gonna be using bobbles to spell out grandma. So not for me. <laughs> No, 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 not for me. So I've been working on my brother-in-law's king size blanket using the bush stitch. And this is how wide it is now. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is two skeins, two full skeins of yarn, and I'm starting on the third skein now. So you can imagine how this is going. Um but it's going to be beautiful once it's done. So this is like my long-term project. I was hoping to have this thing done in October. But then I got all those requests and orders in. So I've been working on that stuff because I know this blanket, you know, there's no way I was going to have it done. I This is the first time I've done a king-size blanket. So I did not know what I was getting myself into um but it's it's what it is it is what it is and I uh I haven't got any spinning done um other than what I showed you last time I'm working on another another um skein of Malabrigo I started a knit skirt just a plain knit skirt with some super bulky that I have or some bulky that I have it's like outside it almost looks like a green but inside it's like a, it looks like it's brown it, 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 yeah and uh it's gonna be a pencil skirt and so this is the the waist and I'm doing increases as I go for the hips and stuff I mean this is like I can't stretch it the way I want to because I don't want to pop it off my needles but I'm going to be putting in some more, um, once it's blocked, it'll be perfect. <laughs> but I got I to gotta put in about uh, 10 more stitches for increases. And, uh, and then just knit. And then this is actually the, the waist. And I did a crochet. I started off with crochet because I want to put like a, a belt through there. To just be able to tighten like an I-cord belt, just be able to tighten it as I need to. Um, I'm pretty sure the part that goes over the hips will hug it enough that I won't really need a belt, but just for a, like a decorative thing. Uh, this was some yarn I had gotten to make a sweater for my husband, but I didn't have enough yarn, so I frogged it. But there's enough there to make a simple skirt for work. And um, and if I can't wear it, I can always get it with one of my girls. So, but yeah, that's what's that's what I'm working on. I uh, <laughs> surprised I've been able to do all these videos for you guys lately. Uh, normally, I'm just either I'm not home or I'm just just not feeling it. Um, this uh, I would I would prefer to be spinning. Yes, I will. I went to Baba's yesterday. They were having a a sale where you got a a card and you got a free pattern. And um, 
and I got a book. So, and I got some DPNs for sock knitting, but it's not for sock knitting. I'm going to, I have, I purchased Kay Jones's Gelato Giraffe pattern, and I have some other little stuffy patterns. So, I got the needles so I can to work on my stuffy patterns. These are the Chai Goose, the 6 inch, 1.5, 2.5 centimeters. Um, I got two of those. And then the pattern I got was the, what is it called? Classic Series Tote. I don't know if it has like this. The Tonka Bay Tote. That's what it's called. The Tonka Bay Tote. And you can find it on Ravelry. But that's what it looks like. Okay, so, and then I got this book. It's the November Knits. Because I have enough yarn. I might not have a sweater quantity of yarn, but I have enough hand spin yarn and uh, other yarns that I could, like, you know, stripe stuff and uh, make it work. But this, it has some nice patterns in it that I was interested in. And like this one, I actually know a crochet crochet stitch. I know a crochet stitch that's very similar looking to that. Checking, I thought it was interesting. But it's some nice doable patterns in this book. And that's what I liked about it. And so that's why I got the book. To support my local yarn shop. Even if I can't buy yarn or I don't need to buy yarn. To at least support my local yarn shop to get the things I do want from out of there. So, um, and if you're ever in the Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Chesapeake area, the yarn shop is called Baba B A A B A A Baba Sheep LLC, and it's uh, a nice little yarn shop. Uh, the proprietor is awesome. Her name is Rosalind. And she is a wonderful, very warm, um, helpful uh, lady. And anything you need, um, she, she'll try to be there for you. Or if she can't help you, she'll find someone in her repertoire of friends and customers and designers, local designers. She will find the answer for you to try to help you out. Not only local designers, but local artisans, artists, fiber artists, spinners, weavers, you name it. She has uh, people that she will love to put you in touch with to help you with anything you're working on. Or so that you could get classes set up with that person or whatever. It, that too. So yeah. But that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I'm not sure when the next update will be because, like I said, I have two projects that I definitely got to get done before Christmas. So I'm going to be focusing on that. And um, I'm going to work on this for a couple hours and then I'll switch back to knitting. This gives, I think this is probably one of the reasons why I don't have issues with my, my wrists and fingers is I'm constantly switching back and forth between knitting and crochet. And so you're using different um, muscle groups uh, when you crochet and when you knit. So I wonder if that helps me not having issues with my wrists and fingers as of yet. Uh, yeah, that's, that could be it. So you guys, if you're not a crocheter, you might want to learn how to crochet, work out some new muscles. And if you're not a knitter, you might want to learn how to knit, work out some new muscles. Uh, so you don't get um, issues with your wrist and whatnot. So this yarn, I'm using a J-hook. And this is a new J-hook. I couldn't find my favorite one. Uh, I probably lost it or left it in the project somewhere. Because I'm notorious for sticking my hooks and stuff in my hair and forgetting it there. And they slide and fall out somewhere. Or I lose them in the truck. And then when we clean the truck out, we find it stuck between the... The rails at the seat side slides back and forth on. I found hooks there several times. 
<laughs> so who knows where it's at? It could be in North Carolina, it could be up in New York somewhere at somebody's house or in their yard from where I'm always dragging a couple of projects with me when I go to various places. So I'll have something to do that I want to do and I don't have to worry about anyone trying to entertain me or I can just sit there and they'll leave me alone because I'm not a TV person. I don't know what's going on in some of these shows, Empire and all that stuff that people want to talk about. I could care less about uh, what's this stuff? Um, reality TV. I could care less. Ain't got nothing to do with me. Um, not my life. And if it were my life, I wouldn't want it all over TV to begin with. My business is my business. Yes, they're making money from it, but hey, there's other things in this world you could do, more important things, than run around looking stupid, acting stupid for a TV camera. I just, I don't get it. Um, there's a lot of things in this world that's wrong as it is. And um, so, yeah. You can find me on Ravelry as She Spins. You can find me on um, the internet as SheSpins.com, my URL. Uh, Etsy, She Spins Yarn. And uh, Facebook, SheSpins.com. And Instagram, she spins Twitter, she spins or she spins, she spins number one, and the number one on Twitter because somebody else has she spins and they don't spin their, I think they exercise that kind of spinning. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I uh, I use both my Karen cakes and um. I was very pleased with the virus shawls I got out of those. So somebody's texting me. Sorry about that. Usually my electronics are on silent, but my daughter's at work and my future and her boyfriend's at work and we're his ride too. So I leave the on the weekends, I leave the phone so at least I can hear them go off if they need me to come and get them and stuff. I've been watching um, several uh podcast um let me see. i'll go to my history real quick so i can tell y'all what i've been watching um and unlike a lot of people who drink tea and coffee i'm drinking some coconut water because of the potassium content i'm diabetic i get dehydrated fast so my i need to get my keep my electrolytes at a healthy level Gatorade is the devil. If you are a diabetic, you ain't got no business putting Gatorade nowhere near your body. Get some, get you a banana. If you can't have a banana because of the sugar content, get you some coconut water. Awesome potassium content, and it tastes good. So, um, Pen Feathers and Pearl. I'm watching that today. Uh, she's on episode 28, and it's like a bird's pen feathers. Because her co-host is her bird, Yoshi. So, and Pearl's like when you pearl, when you knit. P-U-R-L-S. Uh, I try Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits podcast. Um, I probably have to go back and look at some of the older ones. Um, maybe she's having a bad day or something. I don't know. But it's she's too perky for me. <laughs> she this time. I mean, it's 11 o'clock, but still, it was a little too perky for me. Um, uh, I watched Katrina's Creations on her seventh one. She was doing her Christmas giveaway video. And I also watch Yarn Junkie. I always try to catch you know, the Yarn for Junkie podcast as much as possible. And da, 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 I watched the blogger Mommy Do It Yourself and More podcast. It was like a hat she was doing. A Sacha Beanie hat. Um, Deep Blue Renegade podcast with Molly Singh. I watched that one. Um, Knit One Heart Two podcast made by Faye podcast. Stranded podcast with Amy Edwards Green. Um, Jan Carruthers, of course, the crochet um, her crochet podcast. She was doing a book book review. She's the Urban Gypsy with a crochet gypsy. Urban Gypsy Crochet. Yeah. 
And then I watched, I tried to watch the Sockmetician podcast, but that beard was freaking me out, so I couldn't watch that one. Um, I'm not a beard person. I do not like big beards, big bushy beards. They freak me out, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't watch that. Um, Arctic Knitting Podcast, I watched that one. Yarn, Yarn Adelaide Knits, I watched her today. Potter and Bloom, uh, Joanna Martinez, she did a tutorial on a pom-pom for a hat. Little Bobby Knits, what Shara May podcast, and Knitting Expat. Uh, she did a um, little blog. She's in New York now, which is pretty cool considering I'm up there a lot just visiting with my husband. So seeing some of the stuff that she's seeing is fun because <laughs> Bender, like they say, Bender done that kind of thing. But it's nice to see her enjoying herself. Um, and then me, my dog, and some yarn. I always watch her podcast. Queen's Yarn Boutique. See Sean's Crack the Corner. The Yarn of World podcast with Sadie Ruin. Um, the Passion Knit Spinner podcast. Um, Lisa Pine Notes. And let me see 24 Karat Crochet. PJ Matilda. Kay Jones. Nina Duke Howard. Uh, Fibromorphics podcast. Uh, if you haven't watched the Fibromorphics, it's F I B R E M O R P H I C S podcast. Uh, if you're a spinner, uh, designer, uh, dyer, these ladies are from New Zealand. They're awesome. They're amazing. Um, I love their podcast. And so far, they're up to episode five, I believe. So go ahead and start the podcast now before the numbers get up. And you're really going to enjoy it. They're very enthusiastic about fiber. Very enthusiastic. And they're still in their 20s. So this is this is like, you know, something nice to see um, and enjoy. And um, also uh, Hudson Valley Knits with Amy. Um, the Crazy Sock Lady Podcast. Uh, Legacy Knits. Dream Heart. She posted again. It was good to see her back on uh, YouTube. Um, Christine Benson, uh, I watch her podcast, and Sarah in Germany, um, Smell Like Yarn podcast, uh, let me see, who else, Brownberry, uh, Brooklyn Knit Folk, Vegas Dealer 78, oh my god, this is like, she, <laughs> she makes me think of me, um, some of the stuff she does, I wish I could do, like, when she's chilling there with her mixed drink. I'll be sitting there like, I want one. <laughs> so, the Happy Knitting Podcast, Ming Miles Podcast, Craftfulness Podcast, um, Sticks and Twine, The Stash Buckler, Lay Christensen, Lee Christensen, her podcast is Luli, like L O U L E I G H, and The Canadian Knitter. I mean, I don't know. Can you go see my history to see what I've been watching? I'm not sure. But if you can, even the trauma of it, Sandra Paul, Cherry Hart, Crochet Podcast, um, The Owl in the Oak Tree, uh, Benjamin Crudwick, Zelda NRJ3, um, Sharon of Moms with Yarn, Denise Schultz, and um, Give Me Yarn 418, uh, yeah, so those, the Yarn Hoarder, those are most of the ones I've been watching. Oh, Lisa Jean, uh, those are most of the podcasts I've been watching lately. Um, you guys, like I said, you can go over, I think you can see someone's history, history to see what they've been watching. So you guys can go over there and check out the podcast, uh, find ones that work for you. If they don't work for you, uh, don't subscribe to them. It's that simple. <laughs> And uh, if they work for you, subscribe to them and catch them when you can. That's what I'm doing while I'm knitting. I'm just watching a bunch of podcasts um, as the day progresses. And it's actually helping me get caught up. I don't get to watch everybody's podcast. I'm subscribed to too many people for that. But I watch my favorites. Uh, some people, like if I want a long one, like the longer podcasts are the ones I save for last. 
uh, I prefer the shorter podcast. And mine is usually pretty short, unless, unless I get a rant going. <laughs> so, but I'm going to let you guys go. That's it for me for today. Um, one of the things I want to do is this year is I want to switch around my uh, craft room. And I want to put my desk down by the windows so I can unblock the windows. And I can put my bookcases back here against the wall. Um, I don't know what it is about winter, but my eyelashes start falling out. It drives me freaking nuts because they always, like, fall kind of in your eye. And it's like you can feel it when you blink, and it's driving me nuts. I end up having to go to the bathroom to get it off. Sometimes I have to get the tweezer to get the end that's still in my eyelashes and pull it away from my eye. Um, and I'm sorry about the glare. This year when I get new glasses, I, I don't like having the glare resistant coating because it gets scratched up. That's what that's what gets scratched up and then you can't freaking um see all of them and then you move that coating and your glasses are perfectly fine up underneath it. So I might go back to contacts, although I, I really don't want to have to be popping contacts in every day. Maybe just put the contacts in when I podcast and then, you know, put my glasses back on. I uh, used to wear contacts all the time. But then when I moved to Virginia with all the things that were irritating my eyes, I just couldn't wear them anymore. I was constantly rubbing my eyes and I was afraid I might scratch my cornea. So that's when I stopped wearing my contacts all the time. I only wear them when I have a vision shift now. And I have to get an in-between prescription until my vision shifts back to normal or whatever it stays at. And I have to get a new prescription of glasses. So far, I've been lucky. My vision has shifted back to normal each time I had a vision shift. My vision shifts happen when my blood level, my sugar levels spike. Uh, they don't know. They they don't know why. And it's usually when I it's usually when it spikes at night when I'm asleep, and that is when it should not be going up. So they don't know why it happens. Like you know, diabetes is a is an immune immune disorder. So, if my pancreas isn't working well at night and my liver and brain say, hey, we need more food, then my, it's going to send out the hormones and, and whatnot to tell my body to release more sugar into the bloodstream. We're hungry and my body can't process it because my, my and pancreas isn't making insulin. So, it's like being in the grocery store frozen in place without any money or not able to move to even buy the food, get the food to pay for it and put it in your buggy. You're just standing there stuck and you can't do anything. So when I wake up my blood sugar is high. And if it's and if the happen enough at if it's been a long enough period of time during the night, then my, my eyes start absorbing waters trying to flush these extra sugars. And then it changes actually changes the shape of my eyeball. And so then that either, what it usually does is it actually improves my vision so that my prescription is blurry because my vision has actually improved overnight. Um, the worst shift I had, my vision prescription dropped half of what it normally was. I'm a very, very nearsighted person. I went basically went <laughs> blind in fourth grade. Uh, that's when I started having to wear glasses. I went from having perfect vision to hitting a growth spurt and then my vision just went kaput and um yeah so if you're waking up blurry eyed and it's taking several hours or a day or two before your vision go back to normal if you find yourself having to go to the bathroom we urinate frequently if you find yourself constantly thirsty having to drink water and just drink 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 and you're still thirsty if you find that your skin is very dry no moisture in it um, and you're having all kinds of cramps and stuff at night, leg cramps, fingers cramps, every muscles are cramping up, you might want to get your blood sugar checked. Um, you might want to go get it checked. Okay? Blurry vision, headaches, nausea, vomiting, all that stuff sometimes can be associated with uh, blood, blood sugar issues and blood pressure as well. Um, I have a combination. I have to take a blood pressure medication with the diuretic because for some reason I fluid builds up in my feet and legs. 
And so I take the diuretic to flush out the extra fluid. But because I'm diabetic, that's why that's why I have this bad boy. It's usually filled with ice and water that I have at work and I sip on it all day. I fill up before I go home and I sip on it all night. So that's like 64 ounces of water that I'm chugging down. That doesn't even count like, you know, like the other juices. Like I drink a cup of coffee and then I drink um, coconut water for the potassium. And then I sip it on that water all day. Um, so sometimes I'll be like, hmm, this water is good. And I'll go fill up my thing of water and I'll just chug, out, chug a bunch of water before I go to bed. So, yeah. Water is good for you. Gatorade is not. <laughs> Remember that, people. You can actually buy electrolytes to add to your flavor electrolytes that you can add to your um, water. And it's no sugars added to it. It's just flavored, like zero calorie flavor electrolytes. And you can add it to your water to help replace your potassium and sodium and stuff that you might lose from at night from sweating and stuff like that. It's healthier for you than Gatorade because it doesn't have all that freaking sugar and salt in it. Um, yeah, Gatorade can put you in the hospital. Ask me how I know. So, y'all, yeah, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go back to crocheting on this blanket for the next hour. And then I'm going to switch back over to knitting. And I'm hoping, that, oh, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. New Year's Eve is when I always start my Pay It Forward. So Pay It Forward 2017, I will be staying up late. I will be posting when it starts. The first 10 people on my Facebook page for my personal Facebook to respond to my Pay It Forward 2017, the first 10 people. And this year, you can get a virus shawl. Hand spun yarn, a hat, a scarf, or a baby cocoon if you're expecting. Okay, those are the things this year. All right, so the first 10 people, New Year's Eve at the stroke of midnight, I will be posting. Hopefully, I won't fall asleep in my chair like I did last year waiting for it. was like It was funny, too, because it was like five minutes. Five minutes. I remember the five-minute mark. And then the next thing I know, all I hear is this, my phone is going berserk. Beep, beep, beep. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? When are you going to post? When are you going to post? Wake up, chick. When are you going to post? And um, I thought it was so funny. And then I posted, and they were going like that. Uh, it's, it's funny that people actually are waiting up for me to make that post to get something handmade for me for the new year. I think that's just the funniest thing. And I, I love my friends to death, but it's it's the funniest thing to me. If people wait up for that. So I'm gonna let you guys go. I got a lot of work to do. Um hopefully the first of the year I'll be actually showing y'all this blanket almost finished. Um once I finish with the blue I have to do the border. It's gonna be in a, a gray. And uh yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to let you guys go. I'm starting to get tired. I hopefully I won't fall asleep. Take care. I've been up since 5 o'clock this morning. It's already 11.38. So I woke up early because my husband had to go to work. So I usually wake up in anyway. But you want to sleep in. But you can't because you got to get up and take the rug rats to their jobs. And I also I got to. I gotta go get some. I gotta get some dye. It's all these grazes back. They grow back too fast. <laughs> Y'all take care.